I'd like to hear something about the million dollar challenge, how, yes. uh, when, when it was put in place, approximately how often it's been challenged and how that all works. Well, it's um, sort of a fuzzy period in history. For a long time, it was a $1,000 challenge. Started in 1968 when I was appearing on a radio program in New York City with a, a parapsychologist who has uh, since then become a very good friend of mine, uh, Stanley Krippner. He worked for the Saybrook Institute in San Francisco. And um, Stanley is, is exceedingly naive, and I've told him that many times, so I'm not... Uh, uh, speaking badly about him at a distance or anything like that. He knows that I'm convinced he's quite naive, but he's basically very honest. He's, he's naive to the extreme, rather, I must say, but uh, he's very honest, and uh, he has many positive experiments, or so he believes. They don't stand the test of time, unfortunately. Well, that's what happens with parapsychology in general. But I believe he's uh, very dedicated and very honest, and I, I couldn't imagine that he would... Uh, that he would fake anything or uh, misrepresent anything at all. At that time on that radio program, um, one of the people present, it might have been Stanley for all I remember, he said, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? And I said, okay, all right, I'll give $100 to any of these psychics who say they, now this is 1968, that was a lot more money at that time. I don't know that I had $100, but I hope I did, because I'd hate to be dishonest. You know how I, I would never deceive anybody. <laughs> But uh, eventually, uh, when it got to be known and people said, wow, you're really doing, you're going to offer $100? I made it $1,000. I didn't always have that $1,000. Then I eventually made it $10,000. And I made sure from that point on, it was getting serious. I always made sure I had the $10,000 in the bank. Now, I will admit to you that every now and then, I'd have to take a couple hundred dollars out of that, but I'd put it back within a matter of days. But uh, generally speaking, the $10,000 was in the bank. Now... That grew over the years until uh, Lexington Broadcast, uh, Broadcasting Syndication, they uh, offered me a, a show that they wanted to call a $100,000 uh, psychic prize. <laughs> and I put in my $10,000, they put in 90. And so it was $100,000. That was a program with Bill Bixby as the host, as a matter of fact. And I'll t I got to tell you one funny episode from that. The, ast the astrologer came along and uh, we, well, we put ads in newspapers and magazines all across the country, and we eventually centered it out. We dismissed the guy who said that he could fly by flapping his arms. He literally wanted to go to the window and show us right then. And we were on the 14th floor, so we decided we wouldn't witness that demonstration. Maybe in the next program. Thank you. Um, but the astrologer said that he could tell what sign somebody was born under. I won't get into what that means, but... Uh, he said, if you get people out of the audience that are born under 10 different signs, or 12 different signs, I'm sorry. There are 12, you have to get 12, yes. Um, <clears throat> and they can prove it by their driver's license, you see, date of birth on it. He said, I will be able to sort them out into the 12 different signs of the zodiac. <laughs> well, we said, as long as you don't ask them their birth date. No, no, I wouldn't ask them that. But he did ask some questions. I listened to part of it. Um, when you see motion pictures, you prefer a mystery over a comedy. And uh, if you're choosing... Uh, colors for to, to decorate a home. Would you choose pastels rather than solid colors or white? And, and things like this. Do you like hot foods or do you not like hot foods? And it went on and on like this. Um, and at the end of that, he gave them a little sealed envelope. Inside the sealed envelope uh, was their zodiac sign. And if it said Virgo, it had the funny little V-shaped thing on it. And it said Virgo underneath it. And he'd give them that, but it was sealed up. They didn't know what they'd gotten. And he went through all 12 like that. Announced at the end of it, he was quite confident he'd get 12 correct out of 12. And <laughs> he, uh, the way we did the thing is we had the 12 zodiac signs set up. A very big set, big studio in, in Hollywood. Big studio, big set, and all 12 signs were there. The instructions were <clears throat> to the people, come out in a group, stand in the middle, now open up your envelopes, look at the sign that's inside the envelopes, and go to that sign and stand under the little arch. And they all did that, and they'd look around, and they'd go over and stand under the arch. Okay, you're all there now? Right. That's the sign that you were assigned to. If that's not the correct sign, go to the correct sign now. Eleven of them moved and went to the right sign. <laughs> One out of twelve is exactly what chance would call for. To his credit, the astrologer uh, told me that afterwards he said no. He, he realized maybe he didn't have the ability to do this. But astrology still works, you see, of course. But he didn't have the ability to do that. 
And uh, gee, he really regretted that and couldn't quite understand it. Many years afterwards, he published something where he said, oh, I found out why it didn't. They faked the driver's licenses. <laughs> so how can you win? But at that point, it was $100,000. Then it became $1 million when uh, people started to remind me, maybe $100,000 isn't all that attractive. And I thought, well, sorry, that's uh, all we can manage. You know, $100,000... I only had $10,000 of that. No, we've got to, um, got to expand it somehow. Then a gentleman, a very obviously wealthy gentleman, came to me and he said, you should have more teeth to your challenge. And uh, he said, I'll give you a million. I thought about that for 20 seconds. <laughs> and I agreed that that would be a good idea. Gave us a check for one million. We deposited it in a, an interest-bearing account uh, with Goldman Sachs. And the provision was that it was called the James Randi uh, uh, challenge, uh, James Randi Educational Foundation uh, Challenge Fund. And it was stuck in there, and we can't use it for anything. We can take the interest off the top of it every year if we want, but we can't use it for anything except to award to a psychic who wins it. So it's isolated, it's there. And the people who say, oh, there's no million dollars running, we immediately send them the latest uh, financial statement with what that uh, prize now amounts to before we take the interest off it at the end of the year. So um, it's there. It's been there for quite some years now, and uh, I think it's probably going to be there for quite a while, to say the least. But we're prepared to give it up because we are legally bound to do exactly that. See, when somebody makes a claim, he would have to make a formal claim stating three things, and this is very difficult for them to do, what he can do, under what circumstances, with what accuracy. And once we know that, we can design a test of that claim. And he has to agree that the test is fair and square. And then, if he insists, if he wants it at all, we would have somebody else that we both trust to conduct the test. I was just wondering if uh, anybody came close to the prize, like had you stumped for a while? Well, like I said a minute ago, it's like being pregnant. You are or you aren't. You know. No, the rules are drawn up in such a way and agreed to, they must be before we even start the test, that this will be the conclusion that will say, yes, this will be the one that says no. And they, it's very evident where there's no judging procedure. No one has to make up their mind or make a decision as to whether or not the person won the challenge. It's right there. It's like, uh, I can fly. Okay, step to the window. You lose. You know, it's, it's that simple. You don't have to make a decision as to whether or not they won. And we will accept, well, that's interesting too. We will accept statistical uh, results. If they say that I can do this, it should be done 12% of the time by chance alone. I can do it 40 times, 40% uh, of the time. Well, uh, we will accept that if, depending on what the test is, of course, what the actual statistics are. But we will accept a statistical result. Now, the psychics out there have been saying, no, he won't do that, but we will. <laughs>